we go. Good lord. I'll show you the uh, bait I'm using and, and how I'm rigging it. Good old LD Ops. Uh, Fish Cat 4 Deluxe, and I think the only difference is, is the seat is inflatable. There you go. Good looking fish. You're alright. Got him on the sink. Good looking fish. Hey Mark, get that fish to bring you back over here. Good old El Diabs. It works every time. Jumper. Oh yeah. Right in there. Nice. All right, ladies and gents, take a quick break from the video to show you exactly what's going on. Uh, I'll start with the rod and uh, reel I'm using. I'm using my uh, trusty uh, Katana K4 uh, split grip. It's a uh, uh, ultralight rod. Obviously, it's seven foot six long, and uh, it's something I, I, I consider a medium fast action. And with the action of your rod, uh, fast means it's stiff and medium uh, means the, the tip has a lot more whip to it. So this one's kind of in between. It's a stiff rod, got a lot of backbone, but the tip does have a little bit of whip in it. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, the reel I have on there is a Shimano Stella 1000 and I have it paired with the uh, four pound Phoenix Iron Feather Braid down to a uh, five pound uh, Runkle fluorocarbon leader that I attach with a uh, double uni nut. Now to tell you what's going on is the, uh, the fish uh, seem to be uh, on the bottom. Uh, started off using uh, a mini jig and I wasn't getting much bites uh, or many bites working it through the, uh, the upper parts of the column. Uh, switched to a, a minnow and a 16th head and uh, uh, on one of the, the casts I let it uh, drop all the way to the bottom. Wasn't paying attention, started the retrieve and as soon as I started the retrieve it got smacked. <laughs> so uh, that told me at least that fish was on the bottom. Uh, continued that again and I got another one as you saw in the video. So um, uh, what we have going on here is is uh, typically a, a, something I'd consider for a, a drop shot situ situation because the fish are on the bottom but the water is very clear. So I'm thinking that uh, a drop shot rig might be a little bit too much for them visually. They, they might be able to see uh, the rig for what it is and the illusion might be lost on them like I say in a lot of the the seminars they're gonna probably see the rig and the illusion is gonna be lost on them um, 
so I decided to stick with the uh, the minnow on the uh, 16th ball head and just bounce it off the bottom. Now, as you can see in this clip, um, uh, I'm casting out and I'm letting that thing uh, go all the way to the bottom. And uh, notice my uh, my reel speed or, or how how fast I'm cranking that uh, that reel handle. Very very slow. So what I'm trying to do is is keep that thing as close to the bottom without getting it hung up. And, and granted, there aren't a lot of snags here, but there are some. Uh, but anytime I feel the bottom, all I do is I, I just raise my rod tip a little bit up and continue that speed. And hopefully the, uh, the angle will keep that, uh, that minnow and that ball head out of, the, out of the, the floor of the lake. And I just continue to re repeat that process until I get bit or I, I get a hook up. All right, now let's go to the bench and I'll show you the uh, bait I'm using and, and how I'm rigging it. All right, guys, uh, uh, show you the uh, uh, minnow I was using out there and, and, and what was working and how I rig it. Um, this is uh, El Diablo Spartan minnow. Uh, it's two and a quarter inches and uh, obviously red and black. And this is one of our most popular uh, baits at Golden State Fishing. It, it literally, it works everywhere from the mud hole to the Sierras. Uh, this thing is uh, usually uh, uh, one of the closers. Like if uh, the bite's not going great, uh, I never open with El Diablo. I always save it, and uh, uh, if the fish don't want to cooperate, uh, I whip this one out, and uh, usually, usually I'll get some bites. Uh, this this bait is just a fantastic color. We absolutely sold out of it at the uh, at the Bart Hall show. <laughs> um, everybody, uh, word is out. Uh, everybody loves this one. I love this one. Uh, just a just a great great bait. Uh, any anywhere you go, um, any water clarity. I, I don't know why this black and red with the the red flake in it uh, just seems to get them in there. So um, I'll show you what I was how I was fishing it. I was fishing it on these uh, ball heads, like right here is a uh, a sixteenth, and here's a smaller one which is the thirty second. Um, I fish both. Uh, typically local, I'll fish the thirty second. Up in the Sierras, a lot deeper water. I'll fish the sixteenth. Uh, um, retrieve style usually changes because with the 16th it's much heavier uh, than the 32nd. Um, so usually uh, I don't let it sink at all. I just start my slow retrieve as soon as it hits the water because naturally that uh, that bait is going to drop even as I'm retrieving it. With the 32nd, I usually let it drop a little bit because that bait's going to sink a lot slower. So I want to get it into the, into the perceived strike zone before I start my retrieve, because otherwise I'll retrieve and it'll be going over the top of the fish and I want it to go right right near the fish. So um, I'll show you how I hook these on. It's fairly simple. Uh, the anatomy of the minnow, the, the bun, bumps, or I like to call them the scoots on the back, that's the spine. You can see a little eyeball there and then you see the roundness underneath here that represents the belly to me. So like I, I like to start where the perceived uh, fish's nose would be, put the hook in, push the middle on until it's starting to go around the bend of the hook like that. And then I carefully push the point out of the spine and slide the bait all the way up to the ball head. So it looks something like this. So you got your hook coming out and it's snug against your ball head. And another reason, uh, not only because it helps it swim straighter, but I like to snug it up just like on drop shot because sometimes I'll feel something, not sure if it's a bite, and my minnow will come back like this. And I know if there's no moss on it, that was a fish and I missed a bite. So I, I, it kind of keys me in on how they're biting, what it feels like on that particular day because fish don't bite the same every day. They don't hammer it all the time. Uh, sometimes they're just going to nip at it and uh, or just pick it up in their mouth and spit it out real quick. Um, so that'll help key in when I feel those little things. I may do a quarter hook set and see if I can catch them before they spit it out their mouth. All right, now let's go uh, over and, and uh, take a look at uh, the float tube and I'll show you how my tube's set up and, uh, and uh, all those things, all my equipment. All right, guys, this is my uh, Outcast uh, float tube. It's a Fish Cat 4. Um, I think they retail for about 230, 250 bucks. They also have the uh, uh, Fish Cat 4 Deluxe, and I think the only difference is, is the seat is inflatable. So this one uh, uh, has a foam seat and backrest, uh, and the Deluxe it's uh, it's inflatable. So I guess you sit up a little bit higher, which makes it a little bit more advantageous to kick, and uh, you get better casts. But uh, this is comfortable. Uh, I really love uh, fishing it. Like I tell guys who haven't tubed before, once you get used to it, 
Um, it's like fishing in a lazy boy. It's very, very comfortable. Um, and it's easy to stay in the seat. Uh, however, uh, you're wearing waders, you're out in the water. Uh, I always uh, make sure uh, I wear a uh, personal flotation device. You never know, this thing gets a leak. Uh, who knows, you fall out of it. it. It's pretty hard to fall out of, but if anything happened, uh, I don't want to be out in the middle of the lake uh, with waders on trying to tread water. That could, that could definitely end badly. So I highly recommend wearing a, a life jacket. When you fish, they also have, uh, I think Esteban has ones that uh, are real thin and you pull a cord and they're, they're auto inflated in case you get into some trouble. So it's, it's a little bit easier to fish. That one's uh, actually pretty comfortable. Uh, it's an older vest that I use in my kayak, but it, it gets the job done. Uh, I also use these uh, Outcast uh, kick fins. I think these are about 150 bucks, uh, so a little spendy, uh, but they, they work good. And then, uh, uh, as you saw, I got these uh, rod holders. I think these are about 20 bucks at Bass Pro, and they just attach on the tubes right here. Um, it's really helpful uh, when you hook a fish, even though I'm not bait and weight fishing in the tube, uh, to put your rod in here while I deal with the fish. Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a huge thing to have. Uh, I also built a uh, rod holder out of PVC that I could strap on the side of here. Um, I stopped using it because I just, uh, I don't carry a lot of rods with me when I float tube. I uh, uh, just fish the one now, uh, mainly. Uh, so typically it's a lot of weight to carry and uh, I just I just don't use it very often. Uh, so it's not on here. Now I get a lot of uh, questions about uh, uh, what float tubes to buy and all that. And honestly, uh, I don't have a lot of knowledge about tubes. Uh, this is a second tube I've owned. The first one was purchased for me years ago uh, for Christmas, I believe. And I think I used it once or twice and, and uh, sat in the garage and, and kind of rotted away. <laughs> uh, but the best, best thing I can tell you is um, much like waders, uh, uh, if you use it all the time like I do, I would spend the extra money and get something that's uh, a lot more rugged and has a lot more durable material. I think that's a lot of the issue with the less expensive ones. Um, they will work and get the job done, uh, but they don't have, uh, they aren't made as, uh, with as good of material. So they, they, uh, they won't put up to a lot with a lot of punishment. So it's going to be very soon before you're buying a new float tube or having to repair it. Uh, but this one, uh, uh, so far, has dealt with a lot. I take it up to the Sierras, obviously out here local, uh, and it works great. Uh, and, and it was worth the money that I spent for it. But if, if you're just going to do it casually, maybe once in a while, try it out. I, I, I see nothing wrong with buying a, a less expensive uh, float tube, seeing how you like it. If you're really into it, then you can upgrade to something uh, uh, more expensive that's going to last you a lot longer. Pretty decent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's uh. He thinks he's bigger than he is. Yeah. Good Lord.
Okay. Good lord. There we go. Good looking fish. All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. Uh, great little uh, morning uh, fishing session. Now, hey guys, I want to take a quick break from the video, so apologies. Uh, my good buddy Rod uh, ended up catching a 23 pound uh, trout out at the old mud hole. I guess it's the, the biggest trout to uh, come out of the lake in about 10 years. Uh, it's awesome video and it, it couldn't have happened to a nicer, uh, nicer guy. He's a great guy. There's a link right up here to the video. Uh, he has a newer channel, so uh, it might not uh, pop up right on your feed. Uh, just hit the link and uh, and go check it out. It's it's uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> but I uh, uh, just wanted to interrupt, so uh, uh, let's get back to the video. But uh, Silverwood uh, is awesome to get back there. I uh, really love that lake, uh, especially I, I used to spend a lot of time down in Miller Canyon. Uh, it's a hike down in there, but a uh, uh, great spot, real picturesque, and, and uh, typically the trout go down in there. Uh, this time they're up in Cleghorn. Uh, probably in the next uh, few weeks, I will take a trip down into Miller uh, to see what's down there because I know the trout will eventually make it down there. But uh, uh, out at Cleghorn, uh, I, I did kick around that uh, that lake. It took me a while, but uh, uh, caught a few in the morning up front, and then uh, the bite kind of died off. So I kicked around to the uh, near the outlet of, uh, of Cleghorn there, and uh, there were some guys in there on tubes, and uh, they were getting them in the shallow water on a, uh, a bobber and a jig. Uh, and barely moving it. They weren't working it much at all. Uh, the, the fish seemed real shy to bite, but uh, the reason why I mention it is uh, it was a good change of tactics. Uh, they weren't getting bit the conventional way, so they put on a bobber, slowed down the retrieve, and uh, started getting fish. Uh, I just didn't go in there because it was there's already a couple guys in there and they're into a bite and I didn't want to crowd them. Uh, I just don't like to do stuff like that, but uh, 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 Great job on their part. Um, they obviously knew what they were doing and, uh, and we're getting the fish. So that's all uh, we have to do. Uh, when you're anywhere and you, and you think there's fish around, you were getting them originally one way, they stop biting. Uh, change up your, uh, your retrieve style, change up your bait a little bit. Uh, try something different because uh, uh, that can be the key to, to uh, getting bit and not getting bit. Uh, uh, because I was I was working uh, uh, my minnow back over there, uh, same one I was catching with up at front, and they didn't seem to want anything to do with it because I think it was just a speed thing. It was just even though I was going slow, it was just a little too fast. They wanted something almost standing still, and uh, but still had slight movement to it, and that's where the bobber and the mini jig came in, and uh, and those guys were cleaning up. So that was that was just awesome. So if you're interested in any of the uh, Golden State fishing custom baits I was using or the Waterland sunglasses or the uh, katana rods, there's a QR code right up here. Uh, click on that, it'll take you to a link tree which has uh, hyperlinks and discount codes. Uh, you can get up to 15% off. Golden State, uh, if you use code CSPANKER, you get 10% off. And uh, Waterland, if you use the hyperlink that's provided in the link tree, you'll get 15% off your purchase. Uh, the uh, katana rods, very important. Uh, uh, they're only available currently on Instagram. So if you click that link, it'll take you to the Instagram page and you can message them. Uh, I just talked to uh, Esteban and Art and uh, they have just agreed on the new flagship katana. Uh, so there will not be any more of these uh, prototype katanas like, uh, like I've been fishing. There is one rod that they decided on and uh, uh, they're going to have it produced and they will be wildly available very, very soon. Uh, so uh, uh, just be patient, they're coming. I've handled the rods and they are awesome. <laughs> and uh, uh, I should get my hands on one soon and I'll start using it in the videos so I can uh, give you a full report on how it performs on, uh, on the jigs and the fish. But uh, uh, it's a great, great rod and it's, it's, it's kind of in between. So it's one of those rods you could, you, I would drop shot with it or throw mini jigs. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great, great rod and I'm, uh, I'm really happy with it. And uh, it will come in uh, with a Tennessee handle or split grip. So uh, just just be patient. It's coming. Uh, I've seen it and touched it with my hands. So it does exist. <laughs> and it'll be here very, very soon. So with that, uh, always make sure you like and subscribe. Share the videos. Uh, if you ever have questions or comments, 
uh, please uh, leave them here or uh, contact me contact me on my Instagram at Seaspanker Outdoors and uh, I do my very best to get back to you in a timely manner but uh, you know sometimes uh, it takes me a little bit like uh, this past weekend I was out at the Bart Hall show got to meet a lot of you guys which was awesome it was, it was great seeing everybody and we had a really good show uh, but when I'm doing stuff like that I get a little bit busy <laughs> so I can't always be uh, be answering the questions on the phone uh, uh, so I do apologize I do try to get back to you in a timely manner and I will eventually get back to you so <laughs> uh, especially if you have questions uh, in a reference uh, an upcoming trip and where to go what to use uh, I'd post that question a few days early to give me a little bit of time because sometimes I can get back to you right away sometimes I can't uh, uh, so so I do my best and uh, uh, keep the questions coming I, I do actually like answering them and, and uh, Hearing about you guys getting on fish it really really makes my day and really that's what that channel this channel is all about. So uh, until next time, hope to see you guys out there and uh, tight lines.